Yo, uh, if if by the time this comes out, think about that. Somebody got paid. To, to listen, listen to, to your music shit. and give them and, and give an give opinion like a real deal like well thought out thought like dude thank you yeah i'm honored you no know? like <laughs> i i mean shit growing up like and the source was such a big deal when you would like go and look at the mics and but but again it'd be like just just yeah. having people give a fuck from pitchfork or you know if, you, sure. if someone talked to you 15 years ago 10 years ago shit eight years ago 100 i would just be i would be so excited they, they, the, the the review could have just been a shit on me and i've right. been like i'm getting reviewed and that's still how i feel now um so yeah I, but i just now i'm starting to see like the effects of the music that's happening even past yesterday i kind of missed how big that moment was on tiktok for the first few days of like 12 15 20 thousand women just sharing their story it was crazy yeah no it's 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 crazy too because you the success of that moment on tiktok is what kind of it sped up you dropping the deluxe yeah exactly we planned to drop the deluxe but it was like i was going to wait a few days or maybe even a week and see if i needed to come back right. around and I was kind of inspired by Post Malone because remember mm. he dropped F1 Trillion and it had all these features and then he dropped like seven songs called the Long Bed Edition right after with seven songs that were solo. I had these five like fire features come in at the bottom of the ninth inning. Mm. Like people showed up for me like Halsey, Russ, Keith Urban, yep. Ernest, like all those features showed up with for me like within a week of releasing crazy now because yeah. i remember hearing you working on some of these records like at the beginning of the tour just in a room backstage yeah and like these we were still writing beautifully broken on the beautifully broken tour For i never sure. thought of it that way kev that's right that's true that is pretty crazy. that's a great way to put it that's yeah. why you're a good interview if you're watching this uh there's, there's a good chance by the time this is released that you had the number one album your first number one album. Yes, it was either me or Rod Wave, and it's up. Uh, Look, he the probably deserved up. it more than me, and I'm happy for him. But it's it's crazy to think how far you've come, bro. Like, you know, I th I, I always say when I when I think of music, you are an anomaly yeah. in terms of your career path. Like this doesn't happen. I don't know if it'll ever happen again. I think that you've always heard this. From when you know, however many fifty to a hundred or three or four hundred people cedars you were doing, but I, I feel like what's always been synonymous with you is when people meet you, they love you. Right. Right. Um, and I feel like that's just happening now on a world worldly stage. Yes. And just talk like like how big of a deal is that, man? Because the last album was number five, right? Yeah, I think last album was five, and I was blown away that we were in that car. That's what I was talking to Joe about. And I love Joe's perspective. I needed it this week. Yeah. Album week when Joe was like, don't worry about a number one album, dude. Just worry about being Jelly Roll, man. For don't sure. stare at the sun. I've got I'll, That'll stick with me forever. But um, for me, it's still just like, I guess just being in the conversations are still so new to me. Mm -hmm. Like when I read the first time that char uh, hits whatever, Daily Double drops and it goes, a uh, Jelly Roll and Rod Wave within X amount of thousands of each other for what could be first week number one. And I'm a like enormous Rod Wave fan. Yeah, he's like great. a huge Rod, like, and as an artist, as a human, like how he's handled himself and critical appeal and yeah. the songs and just what he stands for. And I feel like we're singing the exact same song just over two different beds right. of music. Right. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's a. Uh, it's like, I would say that we're in the same house, just, you know, we're in different rooms. Mm. You know what I mean? That's what's happening, right? With Jelly Roll and Rod Wave anyway. So just even being that kind of conversation with him or Charlie XCX and like these, like, these are pop stars to me. Hey, you know I don't know I mean? if you know this. You're a fucking pop star. Oh, that's crazy talk. That's cr that's crazy we keep, talk. It's funny. Every time we see each other after some time, we'll be like, yo, it's getting weird, ain't it? It's getting weird. And it's it is getting weird. It's though. getting weird. That. I'll admit that to you though. On and off camera, it's getting weird. But like in a good way. But it's no. Still but weird. It, it, but dude, it's like if yeah. if I'm watching the Super Bowl and you're in a commercial, and then I'm watching SummerSlam and you're fucking. By the way, pulling off what? What an amazing choke slam! Oh, listen. It was. I probably you got that trouble. motherfucker up there. Listen, I hate to say this. I'll get in trouble for just saying this. I've had one of the best years ever. If I have a number one album this week had a number one album saturday night live i mean i was invited to the grammys for the first time this year this is all this year and i'm turning 40 40 i'm gonna be 40 this year and i can still tell you that i think summer is probably the coolest moment of the year oh for sure it's just hard to beat dude it's like the listen he, the, i got slimed that's up there that too. was cool yeah but for me these were big moments for me because i've talked about this a little bit but not the way i really want to is like this was like inner child moments for me yeah 
You know what I mean? Like as a kid who grew up in the system, and everybody knows my story. They're exhausted hearing it. I don't want to talk about it no more neither. But just knowing where I'm from, I was by by some decisions I made had to grow up a little earlier than most people. Yeah. So because of that, I didn't. You know what I mean? Like you bring me back and slime me. You circle back around and I get to choke slam somebody and suck it. Listen, and they brought me in full face. Right. A town oh, down straight. under, just oh, yeah. healing off, just doing what they do best, just gracing them, just gracing in Austin, just wiling people up. And I get to come in with a chair shot. And then listen, here's the shoot on. I shot on I shot on a little bit with Logan, but here's a real shoot on this too, Kev. Austin Theory's a hero in this. Grayson's a hero in this. Ms. Uh, R-Truth. Dude, R-Truth is one of the best humans on earth. I've heard that about him. One yeah. of the sweetest, most down-to-earth, what can I do to help you, loving dudes you will yeah. ever meet. His uh, his character where he confuses stuff is so hilarious, but like, if that wasn't his character, that's a piece of his soul anyways. Yeah. Like, just that lighthearted spiritedness of who he is. And I realized really early when I was working with all of these dudes that they were doing everything they could to make me look as good as I could. Yeah, that whole jelly and roll it, spoof he had, it kind of set you up. Like I, I, like that first appearance you did and he had the jelly. <laughs> like, it's so good. Dude, it's like, it was cool, man. So like that, watching them rally. And it when you realize that, it gives you a whole new respect for wrestling. Yeah. I always say it to guys when they do, when like uh, I tell Eric Church or guys, they don't know the language sometimes, but I'm like, man, in the wrestling world, Post Malone, when he put me on his album, I was like, yo, this is called giving me the rub. Mm-hmm. Like you're pulling me over right now. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Putting me over, you're yeah. putting me over, yeah. dude. It's like you're giving me the rub right now. Um, And I realized that that's why that business has stayed big for so many years. I wish music would steal that from them. The idea of constantly trying to pull people, get, get people help, over. Help put people over. Constantly trying yeah. to put people over. Constantly trying to give people the rub. Like, watching. I think, I think, you know, I think Drake did that for a long time. People, you know. Because even in Austin's shoes, his idea was like, I know I'm taking a bump here. And listen, Austin is a world-class wrestler. He has no business allowing an overweight musician choke slamming him on SummerSlam. You got him up there, man. You know what I mean? He sold right? too. But he's But it's... In his mind, it's like, no, this is what's best for all of us in this moment. Mm -hmm. Because if we all do this right, this clip could be big for all of us. This could be big for the entire wrestling world. This could be new eyeballs on wrestling. This could like, this is how they think of every decision they make back in those locker rooms. And it's, I admire it, dude. And I'm thank you for letting me come on here and get to shoot on that a little more because it's like, I'm now I'm also obsessed. I am ready to put a ring in the backyard. Yeah, I ran into (laughs) a rumble in Tampa. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was just there hanging. Yeah, Remember, we were both just, just there. Out. You was with yeah. your son. Yeah, we were just there on some like now I'm a fan, whatever dude. stuff. No, yeah. it's great.